gonna we're gonna talk about energy, the remaining energy, at whatever distance we may be trying to to properly ethically shoot game. There's been an awful lot of attention paid to ballistics coefficient. A ballistics coefficient doesn't mean much to the average hunter at all. Ballistics coefficient really doesn't come into any benefit till you get out there around 600 yards. Irregardless of the caliber, irregardless of the bullet weight or shape, it doesn't really come in any any beneficial play to you as a hunter. And ballistic coefficient is is nothing but nothing but a number that's been assigned to a particular bullet form, bullet profile, particular bullet shape, ogive shape, boat tail bullet, flat base bullet, whatever it may happen to be. And we need to be paying a whole lot more attention to the actual the actual remaining energy. Whatever cartridge we're shooting, whatever game that we're attempting to take, then we need to pay attention to ballistics coefficient. Ballistic coefficient has, has a considerable benefit to the bullet in flight as far as its flatness, its trajectory, and wind holding holding into the wind capability, mostly to do with target shooting. Target shooting, long range target shooting, long range competition, thousand yard shooting in, under competition, and and things of that sort. And yeah, I always I always want to know what my ballistics coefficient is. And I look at I look at my ballistics tables you know, like to have for, for many, many years to get an idea of what it, what it is compared to maybe something else. But nobody, you or I or anybody else, has ever killed a head of game in our lifetimes with a number. That, that number, let's say 625 ballistics coefficient, that isn't what killed the animal. The way that the bullet por performs in, in in a hunting situation, and the bullet placement is is what we need to be paying attention to. And I'm talking about this because I think a young set of younger set of people, younger generation, have got all hung up on this ballistics coefficient. We need to be paying attention to energy. We're being told stories by various individuals, various different entities. Well, I shot an elk at 1,149 yards or 1,300 yards or whatever it may happen to be. Did you ever look to see what kind of energy is remaining with, say, a 7 Remington Magnum shooting a 168 grain bullet? Some of these instances, we've only got about 300 foot-pounds energy, remaining energy at that kind of distance. But we're being made, made to believe that, boy, we can just kill these things, you know, like they're lightning struck. Now that isn't how it works. I've killed a, a tremendous amount of game. I've been in on the kills of a tremendous amount of game in addition to what I've hunted in my lifetime. And I know what works and what doesn't work. And there are bullets. There are bullets that have that that have the ability, they hit game harder than other bullets. And I'm gonna describe one of the best best described situations here. We've got real thin jacketed bullets such as such as burger bullets, such as the entire line of Sierra Sierra bullets. Some of the 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 line of bullets that Hornady makes. The real thin jacketed bullets that they've came out with as of lately, the EDLM bullets or EDL X bullets. They're just simply nothing but a, a, a simple cup and draw bullet. They, bullets being, have been made like this for years and years and years. And probably the most experienced bullet makers as far as, as, far as that goes, accuracy wise, has, has always been and will continue to be Sierra bullets. They, they know what it is to make a bullet. Those, those people are known for accuracy. But those bullets are not choice game bullets. 
we're going to go to the opposite end of the spectrum. We're going to we're going to talk about Barnes X triple shock bullets, Barnes X triple shock, and their tip bullets and their long range bullets, also a tip bullet. That that bullet, of course, as as we all should know by now, is a solid copper bullet with a small cavity that's been punched in the bullet before the 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 ogive of the bullet is formed to create a bullet that opens up and holds together and penetrates. And I think that anybody that's hunted game very much and has actually paid any paid any attention that they know they know the difference between hitting hitting an elk at 300 yards with a 180 grain Barnes X triple shock out of a 300 Weatherby traveling at the muzzle at 3,200 feet a second compared to compared to say a very thin jacketed bullet such as a burger bullet. That burger bullet can't possibly hit hard and do what do what we should be expecting to kill game because the bullet is nothing but a target bullet. It's a target bullet in a different colored box in an orange box instead of a yellow in a yellow bullet in a yellow box. Those bullets are just simply cup and draw bullets. They're not game bullets. They're described as hitting hitting the game and petting trading two and a half to about four inches before they just blow up and fragment. Well, that's really nice. Blow up in the blow up in the shoulder of an elk. Never make it into either lung and cripple the elk. And if you, if you shot at the elk in poor poor place in the first place and too far away. Chances are the elk's going to get away. He's going to die a lingering death. That's not what we want. And this is part of why I'm talking about this energy, is because it's tied into the poor choice of bullets, and it's being encouraged by unknowing people that that think that they know what they're doing, but they really don't. And just because that bullet has a high ballistics coefficient, it doesn't mean that it's a great performer great performer on our game, whatever the game may happen to be. I've maintained for my lifetime that somewhere around 1,800 to 2,000 foot-pounds of striking energy with whatever we're shooting, shooting elk, let's say that kind of starts out with about a 160 grain 7 millimeter bullet starting out at around 3,150 feet a second or so. That That will give you reasonable a reasonable amount of energy out there around 450 to about about 500 yards and for elk it'll give you the energy you need out to you know in another 100 or 200 yards past that you know to to shoot deer and I've had people remark to me well different bullet weights you know and so forth have a deciding factor yes yes they do and part of that is the sectional density when the bullet weight goes down, the sectional density number goes down. When the bullet weight goes up, the sectional density number goes up. And the best penetrating bullets are the bullets with with a, a sectional density somewhere up there around 0.300 sectional density, or maybe even more. And that what that's what makes the seven millimeter caliber 175 nozzler partition. Such a wonderful game killer, whether you're going to shoot big deer, elk, moose, whatever it might happen to be, the 175 nozzle partition is an outstanding performer for killing game. Now you can still shoot, you know, somebody else's bullet in 175 grain weight and it would have the sectional density number but it doesn't have maybe it doesn't have the hold together ability or the penetrating quality. Let's say let's say we're going to shoot 175 grain Sierra Game King bullet, seven millimeter bullet. You know that bullet is a very very poor choice. I know I know these things, not because I read it or anything else, because I've been there, I've tried it, I've done it. Time and time again, I've tried these things, and every once in a while, we see some of these things come out, you know. And one of the things that's been 
bragged up so much here in the past several years has been this Hornady EDL X bullet. Well, they've put a special plastic tip on it so it evidently holds in flight and so forth. They've checked it with, with radar. That's all fine and dandy. That's all fine and dandy for target work. But the bullet is a thin jacketed bullet and it's a damn poor bullet for shooting elk with. How do I know? Because I've shot elk with it and it's a poor bullet. And it doesn't do anything near the type of job on an elk. It doesn't hit an elk with the, with the way that it's, it's being hit and the ability to penetrate. It doesn't have the construction to do so. And a friend of mine mentioned somebody who puts on a puts on a TV show that that hunts coyotes and shoots a lot of coyotes. Well, he happens to be shooting a six millimeter six millimeter Creedmoor. Well, he's been shooting both the 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 108 grain and the 103 three grain. And he's remarked that they're wonderful, wonderful coyote bullets because between 250 yards and 400 yards, the bullet never comes out the other side of the coyote. Well, that's a hell of a game bullet, isn't it, guys? That's a hell of a game bullet. The bullet won't even make it out the other side of a, of, of a coyote. You know, a coyote's not very far through. So that right there tells you that neither one of those bullets, and they're both the same construction, bullet one, you know, one, one's got a, One's got just a, a small a small hollow point and the other one's got got the got the plastic tip, but it's still a hollow point. If you pull the plastic tip out of there, a big hollow point. And those bullets open very dramatically. To be real honest with you, Hornady's hundred hundred grain interlock six millimeter bullet is a hell of a lot better bullet to kill game with than either one of those two bullets. Those, those, I'm just describing this, this coyote situation because it was explained to me after the fellow watched this show. And so we need to pay attention to what we're using here for bullets. We've got a greater selection of bullets at this point in time than we've ever had in our entire lifetimes. And, but don't get fooled. Don't get fooled by ballistics coefficient. Pick a bullet that's got proper construction. One of the very first bullets to come into the market in this, in, in, you, know, you know, in the United, in the United States was the Nosler Partition. It's still a very hard bullet to beat in, in, the, in the penetration, the way it performs ability, because the Nosler Partition all, always works. I've killed game from, from, from 25 yards to 825 yards, I'm talking about elk game, with a 7 millimeter 175 nozzle partition, and it's, it's worked swell for me from that short distance to that distance. I don't know what it does past there, I know that it'll penetrate clear through an elk at 825 yards because I've done it. And I'm not encouraging you to shoot that far, but I've done that once, taking a considerable number of game between six and maybe about 670 yards or so with that bullet, elk game, deer size game, and so forth. <coughs> bears, you know, big, big black, big black bears, and, and, and so on. And almost every, almost every bullet maker has has a better bullet to do a job. Hornady's got a better bullet. Their Hornady GMX bullet is a real tough bullet. And of course, all the entire line of the Barnes bullets, and you know the, the the triple shock bullets, are wonderful bullets for killing game. I don't think that there's anything that hits an animal harder than a Barnes X bullet. And I have found them in the last years, as Randy Brooks has spent a lot of lot of time improving the accuracy level in one thing or another with his line of bullets. And in a lot of instances, I found them to be the very most accurate bullet, irregardless of brand. That bullet could be the most accurate of any of them, and it, it it really kills game. Yeah, it doesn't have it doesn't have that real high ballistics coefficient. But if we're if we're ethically hunting, and we're not trying to take game at extreme range, 
It's got all that's required. It's got the ballistics coefficient is all that you need within reasonable game shooting distances and it'll do the job. We've got, you know, Spear, Spear has got a few bullets that are that are wonderful bullets. You know, they're, they're better made bullets, they're tougher bullets that are not just simply a cup and draw bullet. And we've got the trophy bonded tip bullet that, you know, that Federal, Federal sells now. Federal, you know, has begun to sell this particular bullet to the public. That's a wonderful bullet. That's, that's simply a takeoff, kind of a design. Ackley, Ackley had bullets made many, many years ago, pretty much around the same same design, but we didn't have plastic tips to put on them. It had a, just a little small lead tip. Those bullets worked wonderfully, wonderfully well. We've got the Swift line of bullets, whether it's the Sirocco bullet or whether it's the, 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 their uh, partition type of a bullet, you know. That's, that's, a, that, that's a very, very good bullet for, for taking game. And, you know, if we're hunting elk size game, we need to pay a considerably more attention to what we're using than if we're, if we're shooting deer size game and so forth. We can get by with some of these less heavily constructed bullets when we're shooting deer size game than we're shooting elk size game. But the heavier game, we need to pay attention to what we're using in the construction of the bullet and ethically, only ethically try to take game at distances that we know that we can take game at, not not at an attempting at an extreme range trying to lob something at an animal hoping that we're gonna make a hit. This isn't this isn't acceptable. So these things are, are that I've described are all tied into one another and we need to pay attention to these these aspects or we're going to get ourselves in trouble.